politically incorrect, Bill Maher. Bill's guest tonight, Dennis Miller. Metallica's Lars Ulrich. From the Goo Goo Dolls, Johnny Resnick. And political columnist, Debbie Schlossel. All right, let's meet our panel. She's an attorney and sports agent whose column, Debbie Does Politics, is online at JewishWorldReview.com. Debbie Schlussel. Debbie! There you are. Hey, you. Hey, How you doing? You. Thanks for coming by again. He's fresh off a Grammy win for Best Hard Rock Performance as part of a little band called Metallica. Their CD is s and m Lars Ulrich, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. How are you? Big fan of yours. His band is the Goo Goo Dolls, and their, their CD, Dizzy Up the Girl, has sold over 3 million copies. Johnny Resnick right over here. Johnny. Hello. Johnny. How are you? Enjoy your work. And keep your people quiet. <laughs> He'll be at the Desert Inn in Las Vegas the weekend of March 16th, and his own HBO show is on every week on this very... Uh, what am I saying? Dennis Miller is here, ladies and gentlemen. Now, why would you bring me on after this kid? I, you know, I feel like the narc on the panel. <laughs> I feel like Ed Sullivan. Are you kidding? <laughs> okay. Well, uh, listen, uh, to give me a little street cred with these people. What? I, uh, I hosted the uh, MTV event Tuesday night at the uh, House of Blues. It was a Rock the Vote event, and uh, I'm for getting people involved in politics, of course. Um, where MTV and I differ is that MTV thinks there's a virtue in voting just for vo voting sake, uh, which I do not. Uh, motor voter law, I'm iffy on that one. Uh, I think the disinterested and moronic should stay home. Uh, now they want to register people at MTV concerts, which I really have my doubts about whether we have sincere voters at an MTV concert. Well, Bill, I agree with you 100%. The fact is that we don't need a bunch of Spicolis who can't go register to vote on their own, can't even find the next place to pierce or tattoo. They don't know anything about the issues. And because they were at a concert for Metallica or the Goo Goo Dolls, suddenly they should be most choosing of, my Most president. of our fans aren't old enough to vote. <laughs> this is like Taylor Dane meets Utant. <laughs> She was coming out of the box with, like Larry Mahan at a rodeo. <laughs> Boom, bam, bam. I think the one thing that you can't take away from MCV in this is that they certainly should have, you know, get the information to people and oh, about give, Bill Clinton wearing boxers or briefs—that's information. About at least giving people the option of it, giving people the option and giving yeah, them but, the information so people can make up their own decisions about this. I mean, that's but an uninformed decision is not a good thing for democracy. Yeah, who cares who votes? Yeah, everybody's, everybody's always whining about, oh, we've got 38%. Yeah, you know, you can't get three out of ten people to agree on pizza toppings, much less the leader of the country. Who cares? They should, yeah. they should just give more. MTV should, if they want to register people to vote at concerts and stuff, they should have, like, the political platforms of every candidate, and then Spicoli can make an educated decision. Well, I know all the, but, but, I know all the concerts I've been in in my life. I'd like to go over briefing sheets, you know? Yeah. 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 Well, you know, just at least take the it vomit it. into, cone them up. <laughs> just like, whatever. I was, all right, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Right. Okay, well... Whether the voters are astute about politics, I know everybody here on the panel is, uh, and it's been a very interesting campaign. We thought it would be dull, but uh, today all the uh, Republicans uh, are continuing to jump ship on George Bush. Why, who and bailed today? I am calling. <laughs> Bennett, William Bennett, Mr. Wow. Virtues, uh, and uh, yesterday it was the, uh, the Secretary of State here and the Mayor of San Diego. They're all going over to McCain. Good. Which just shows yeah. that, you know, they just want a winner. And, I mean, people have said to me, why are you so against Bush? They said, I've never heard you so nasty about anybody. And they're probably right. I have been nasty about Bush. You know why? Because he doesn't deserve it. He hasn't done yeah, anything. Yeah, he's on a free ride. The presidency isn't an entitlement well, job. I, I, I agree. And he's not the smartest guy out there. 
I mean, at the end of the day, do you not want the smartest guy out there to be president? No, that's Clinton. Clinton. Clinton's the smartest guy. Clinton should stay. Which one, Bill or Hillary? that for popular opinion? But, you know, Clinton's still the smartest guy because he's convinced his wife to run for the Senate in a state that he knows isn't community property as far as the divorce. <laughs> so, you know, to the end. To the end. <laughs> I know in uh, 92 or 96, you were very big for Perot. Well, I'm for Perot because he's more than Peter O'Toole on his birthday. You know, I, uh, I like that. <laughs> but, but I, you know, he's like a forehead vein in a gray suit. And I think that uh, I always felt bad what we did about Stockdale because Stockdale was an odd guy on television, an his old vice man, president. but a very heroic man. And I think John McCain is like a younger uh, permutation of uh, Stockdale, right. and I think that, uh, right. listen, we always talk about how we've given short shrift to Vietnam vets in this country. They came back, everybody shied away from them, thought they were odd, thought they flipped out over there, thought that they were like Rusty Cali, they were baby killers. You know, there's always been that bad vibe that the country's had for Vietnam vets, supposedly, and I've always felt so much empathy for these guys. I think it's time we level our karma with them, and listen, we've put enough slick, prefabricated, uh, you know, BS artists like Bill Clinton in the White House. Yeah. Why don't we put a guy who served for five and a half years in a Vietnamese for us. We owe that to him. If I was, uh, I don't even, I don't even know what he stands for. I just know that I look at the other three guys and think about them offering them out after three years, and I can't look at any one of those other guys and go, yeah, I'll stay another two and a half years. You know, Gore well, would have been out of there. Boom. At least in, among Republicans, I was saying this the other night, I can't understand why the Republican establishment is for Bush over McCain, a war hero. Why are you for this snot-nosed rich kid? Because he's not going to rock the boat. He's not going to exactly right. well, rock the boat, and he's going to yeah. go along. I was reading uh, his, uh, like his views on all the issues. He was talking about gun control and stuff, and he was saying, well, we should just keep the laws the way they are about this. Oh, we should do this right. the way it is now. He doesn't want to change anything. Well, Bill, I think John McCain emerged as to the left of George Bush. So he positioned himself as the more conservative. So all these party establishment what? people voted for him. Why is he to the left? He, John McCain on the issue. Because, because guys, it is like Trent because Water going to paint him no, like because that. He's because they know their gig issues. is up if he gets in there. Because he's talking about issues like campaign finance reform. He supported things like the which tobacco settlement, which traditional Republicans do not support. And um, Because Bill, they get all their money from well, tobacco. Well, I live in Michigan. Be Bill, I live in Michigan. I voted in the primary on Tuesday, and I did, I did vote for McCain. But I'll tell you, the, his victory in Michigan is the biggest argument against campaign finance reform. He had the worst organized campaign I've ever seen, the worst funded campaign. Bush had every organization. He had phone calls. He had rides to the polls. It was terrific, well, yes, but he lost. Him, That's yeah, right, without reform. all the money. And Once it just goes while. to show we don't need the campaign finance reform. The money does not win elections. Well, oh, he's proving oh, that's that, ridiculous. But, but, if, if but you, that's, that's what happened in That's Michigan. ridiculous that money doesn't win elections. You well, know, I don't know if George Bush had like, 70 million. It's like money in sports. No, no, you know what? The Yankees anymore. have the most money. Are they going to win every year? No, not every year. But mostly, yes, they will, because they have the most money. That's well, the appropriate comparison. Bush, million. <laughs> Bush, Bush is still the leading candidate. He might lose with all that money because he's a total moron. He's lost 50 million of his dollars already, right. and yet he paints himself as a fiscal conservative. This guy's I going through money him. like Bill Gates at the Sharper Image. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we have to take a commercial. We'll be right back. Be supermodel Kathy Iowa, the Hughes, John Hedden, Sex Pistol, John Lydon, and Randy Tate. <laughs> <laughs> Always with the jokes, Dennis. Okay. <laughs> now, we're talking about politics. We've got two musicians on. It's, am it's amazing the way when these guys run for office, they always seem to try to adopt some sort of music as their theme. Uh, we all know Bill Clinton ruined... Uh, what, was, what was the... Uh, don't play? stop. Don't start, stop yeah. thinking about... Don't uh, stop thinking about... Monica. Tomorrow. tomorrow, right. Uh, Reagan wanted to use Born in the USA not understanding Which is just that, stupid was it was song. stupid right it was really Be stupid because that song is not a positive song no it's about a what you're talking about a vietnam vet who's down and sleeps all day and and what? it's a dark it song right. down. Well, you read the liner notes there didn't you <laughs> no i just listened to the lyrics <laughs> which is something more than reagan ever did 
Um, you think that Bill Clinton read Kid Rock's lyrics when he posed with him for pictures? Come on. I was there. You were, you were was, there? I'm the one when they cut the out of that picture. When he Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Kid Rock is celibate next to Bill Clinton. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. But I think the fact is that these presidential candidates... Did she just chill me? <laughs> she just chilled you, Dennis. She just... I'll jump the table and Andy Kaufman you to the ground. <laughs> now listen here, Cha-Cha. <laughs> no. Does anybody really believe that John McCain, a 63-year-old guy, his favorite group was Nine Inch Nails? Come on. Well, but he didn't say it was his favorite group. He yes, said he... he did. Well, I think oh, you can't hang on his every word, for God's sake. He's, he's, in, <laughs> he's, trying, to, right. he's trying to look Obviously looser than now. just told you him know? that that was the hip thing to say. Yeah, so he I said the more pathetic him. thing is that we're actually sitting here talking about this. I mean, why, <laughs> why does anybody care about this? I mean, this well, is like, I think it's important. What does it have to do with politics? What does it have to because do with platforms? What do you does it have want to do a presidential with we, we tried to find an issue you guys could get in on. Yeah, do you want a presidential... <laughs> do you I went through. That's, that's really I went through about ten other topics out there, and all of them much tell, more interesting tell me this what, tell me what you tell. want to talk about. Tell me what you're oh, up Oh, settle down, my man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm here. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll talk oh, you down sorry, from oh, this. Well, Good. Let's have a rap session. Let me session. just wait for the Xanax to kick in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, tell me. I'm here. I'll talk about anything. What do you want to talk about? Well, what they talk about? The death penalty thing. I saw that on the sheet earlier. Death penalty? We, we talked about it last night, but I know Dennis likes to kill people like I do. <laughs> uh, no, but I just mean, think you got to draw a line penalty? periodically. You know, or you have chaos in the society. I yeah, mean, exactly. I think that this, there was a thing on the cube uh, well, the sheets about the FedEx, the FedEx commercial, about these guys up in the Wizard of Oz thing that they were inhaling like helium yeah, yeah. from these balloons, and FedEx had to pull the commercial, and there was actually some group called the National, what was it, the National? National Association for the Prevention of Inhalants. Right. Yeah. I mean, the fact, there's actually, there's actually an association called that. And yeah. I think that what's interesting about that is that there's actually people sitting around in a room just like this with so much time on their hands that they actually get to a point where they say, let's start this kind of coalition well, and let's sit there yeah. and like worry well, about it. But don't you think drug abuse hoppers. is a You know, I, like, I think he, that's people that that don't interesting. want their kids hopping. But that's to me is much more interesting thing. than what John McCain chooses to, you know, try to sell his, you know, musical yeah. issues. Well, but Lars, Except they're not going to, they're not, no one's going to vote the munchkins into office. <laughs> <laughs> And Lars. the munchkins are not going to affect people's lives, but Lars. John McCain could. If, if but, a guy says, I'm running for president, and my favorite group is this guy that sings a song, I want to bleep you like an animal, and all his songs are graphic, and they describe oral sex and violence against women, do you think that that's legitimate, that a president should not admire a group like that? He should do some research. Well, you voted for him in the primary. Wake up! Well, but I think <laughs> I mean, in the but country, Dennis, they're all you, you're just that. talking until you think of something to say. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. Do you want me to say something, Dennis? Go say ahead, it. show me. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, take me well, out. Why don't you show me, Dennis? But why, you know what, don't show me, because I prefer pickles. I know the bumps on those aren't contagious. <laughs> I, I think that was on the I wall guess, in the I stall in the men's room. I guess you're not going to have her on your show. What, what are you, what are you no, saying? She's got an got exciting right. career in early morning radio. <laughs> what are you saying? He has herpes? I'm not saying anything because he doesn't want to hear herpes? what I have to say. He just said. I know, but you're critiquing the bumps on his pickle. I, uh, <laughs> I, I mean... Your penis did not look funny hey, to me this all morning. I can say I, 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 <laughs> it looked, you know, how you did could it go just, from what he said to that? Why'd you, yeah. you like went like, oh yeah? You know? <laughs> Why? Well, she, really. she was critiquing McCain. <laughs> that. She was critiquing McCain, then she said she voted for McCain. And I just well, wanted to point that out. I, I, that I, look, none of the candidates are perfect. The fact is, well, McCain's got a lot of. Matter. It does matter. It, it does matter. Why does it matter? matter. Why does it matter? It in the country it where doesn't I come matter from, who the leader of the free world is. It doesn't matter what he associates with you know himself. What? In, Let me in tell some you something. Then why should he be president? Second. 
Because he can he's run the country. It's, it's, it's very easy to stand what, back and say, you, you know, right I don't get involved in politics as if it's a lobby. When you're for a guy that wants to really It's got something to do with it. The media over here sits there and makes those big deals out of these complete non-issues. If well, John if Major got smarter about if John it, they Major could see five th years ago sat there and said, you know, sometimes I listen to an Oasis song or I don't issue? listen to an Oasis song. What does that have to do with his platform? But you're issues? saying that McCain is an advocate of drug abuse because he slipped up one day and his daughter told yeah. him the Nine Inch Nails he walked into his daughter's so bedroom. He dropped, the, he dropped the Trent I Reznor I think reference. I think it's an example of a lot of presidential candidates that they say they identify with things they don't understand that are dangerous. I, I think Trent Reznor's music is dangerous. Dangerous. So he who? talks about violence McCain's against never women. never heard Trent Reznor, no, though. That, that, well, then he shouldn't have said Why? Nine Inch Nails, my favorite He expects group. adults like you and I to sift that out and realize what's the consequence and what's true. Well, what about and the kids that these MTV Choose or Lose people are aiming at who watch Trent Reznor? Who kids watch don't his give a about John McCain. <laughs> and you know what? <laughs> working on his campaign. It's important. When you're above 18 years old, you should be able to realize that a man running for the presidency is under intense scrutiny for six to nine months at a time, and periodically he's going to say something where he's just trying to fit in, keep the vibe going. You shouldn't sit there at home and go, wait, scorekeeper, scorekeeper, well, scorekeeper. I mean, he just, he slipped up. <laughs> it's an easy thing. All right. I have to take a commercial. That's interesting stuff. We'll be Oh, wait a sec. And Randy Tate. <laughs> I don't have a small penis. <laughs> <laughs>